So this is a company that uh, restructuring is starting to be seen in, in the numbers. Are you, are you happy with posting a profit of 41 million rand after all the last making years? Obviously, it's very positive and pleasing, but uh, as we've said, it's a modest profit and it still doesn't lay a strong foundation for going into the future. Yeah. Talk to us about the top line, about revenue growth. Uh, what percentage is coming from domestic, the domestic market and you know, the South African government, the National Defence Force? What percentage is going into the export market? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, there's a split 60-40, 60 local, 40 export. But of course, we can't sustain the local market. There are lots of pressure on the defence spend locally. And uh, a part of a key strategy going forward is to uh, access more revenue stream, order pipeline externally, and so to swing the balance, really. Yeah. But you mentioned the fact that your order pipeline uh, during this year increased by 5 billion rand, and that's going to be over the next five, seven years. Yes. I mean, what do you need to target? What, 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 you know, how, how much do you need to grow your international business by to offset uh, the softer demand coming through from South Africa? Mm. Well, if you look, our turnover at the moment is about 3.5 billion. I mean, to have a sustainable business going into the future, we need to at least double the revenue on an annual basis. Yeah, you also yeah. mentioned R&D spend. Um, for the period, you spent 752 mm. million rand. I mean, are you, have you identified niche areas that will set you apart from competitors globally? Because I'm sure it's a very competitive yes. space and to be able to compete internationally, you need to put a lot of money into R&D. Of course, I mean, most of our R&D is uh, customer funded and that's not always a healthy situation because you can't put your money into the kind of technologies that you'd like to. So we need to increase that quite considerably, but you can only increase that if you have a revenue stream and, and the cash, uh, cash in the bank that will allow you to do that. So uh, in terms of technologies, and they're definitely looking at missiles, unmanned aerial vehicle technology, that's a key, key part of our future strategy as well. That's interesting. You mentioned uh, missiles because yeah. you're building one with Brazil at the moment. Yes. Tell us yeah. about that. Well, it's actually a joint program. Uh, we're designing and developing a new air-to-air -air missile, or the a data program. And we're hoping that uh, once the trials will be successful towards the end of this uh, early next year, that will go into production phase, and that will be hopefully a very lucrative future for us as well. Is that is that a, is that going to be a key revenue generator in the future? I mean, where are you going to be able to sell that to? Absolutely. I mean, we're looking at uh, we're not looking at North America, Europe. Obviously, those are not our traditional markets. We're looking at emerging, developing economies, Southeast Asia, the Middle East, Latin South America, and those were the kind of niche markets that we will be targeting. And uh, the kind of missile that we are developing is uh, affordable, it's appropriate. So is that what you're competing on, basically? You're able to compete in price and sell to the emerging market space? Absolutely. Yeah. When it comes to skills, that's also an issue for, for a lot of businesses in South Africa. To what extent does that impact your business? Are you spending enough to upskill people in mm -hmm. South Africa to be able to, to invest in, in kind of this very highly skilled uh, section of the economy? Well, the human capital base in, in a company like Denel is absolutely critical. What we do have in Denel is, is an aging skills base and we need to fill that gap very quickly. Uh, so we've got a very aggressive plan to actually bring in younger people engineers, artisans, technicians, scientists, software developers, but it is extremely difficult to do that because they are not, there's not enough throughput within our education system to allow us to fill that gap. And why is that? Is, is it the fact that it's, it's such a niche area to go mm -hmm. into, or is it just that, uh, the levels that they're well, coming out with, the, the understanding? We are competing with other industries, obviously, as well, yeah. uh, and, and uh, the defense industry does not seem to be attracting a lot of those, and there's, not, there's just not enough. Uh, individuals coming through the system uh, with the appropriate qualifications. Is government supporting this? Absolutely, and we have very uh, uh, strong uh, initiatives, interventions with government to address this particular issue. Uh, but when you talk about government support, government also allocating 700 million rand to mm. the aero structures business yeah. in order to turn that around. Uh, when is it going to be turned around? Because it's still in a last making position. Well, I mean, you know, uh, the aerostructures business has historically been the one entity that has had a very negative impact on our bottom line performance. Fortunately, that business has turned around. I mean, we've cut the losses there by almost 67%. We're uh, in the process of renegotiating the terms and conditions of our contract with the A400M military program with Airbus. And that hopefully is going to see us uh, arrive at the point at which we will turn that business around within the next 18 to 24 months. And because of the performance that we've enhanced there, uh, there are many other opportunities on the commercial side that's also coming to the fore now. In terms of, uh, let's go back to the international space, because you, you're saying very much, you know, Danelle's future uh, and the turnaround story is going to be hinged on that. Can you give us a timeline? What are the targets to be able to get that uh, aggressively adding to, to your earnings? 
Well, I mean, uh, the other issue I, I did not mention is that we need to have a much more coherent, aggressive strategy into Africa. We're doing a lot of work in Africa, but we need to coordinate it and we need to have a much more coherent uh, approach to it, as I've said. We are hoping to, within the next three years, at least double the revenue of the business. And, and that will be, uh, hopefully, also with the bottom line profit of between 7 and 10 percent. We need to bring down the cost based in the company as well. So the number of interventions, both internally and externally, and of course it a lot depends on our relationship with the local client as well, because if we have to use South Africa as a reference point for the kind of technologies and equipment that we want to sell. And I must say we've got incredible support from the Department of Public Enterprises who we report to, and together we will be, see, we will be looking at ways in which we're going to uh, address the international market. As you say, it's interesting about Africa and the, and the growth there. Let's, let's talk about the debt, uh, sitting at yeah. 1.85 billion rand. Yeah. To what extent are external funders willing to come in and uh, help boost your I capital? Think it, you know, over the last while, it has been difficult, but steadily we see the progress. Uh, second year running, we're turning a profit. I think the new uh, vision and strategy and the, and the strategic objectives that we've set for ourselves, the level of support from government in terms of the recapitalization, uh, and also uh, a very real view from government that Denel needs to be viewed as a strategic national asset. I think collectively all of those issues uh, are giving much more confidence to the financial institutions. I've been on a roadshow with many of them since I've become the CEO, group CEO uh, in January, and uh, there is a lot more positive uh, uh, view towards uh, uh, supporting Denel. Well, that's good to know. Thank you so much for joining us today to take a look at the business of Denel Riaz Saluji, Group Chief Executive of Denel.